Oh hey, welcome to my capstone video. Today we're going to be talking through how I made my grad dress and what I learned from this experience. So I ended up deciding to make my grad dress because I love to sew. I wanted to explore if a path in textiles was right for me and I decided that utilizing this experience of a capstone where I have a deadline and a purpose would kind of emulate the work as a seamstress who has a customer that wants a specific uh, project and needs it by a certain time. The first thing I made was me. So this dress form may have been the first thing I made, but it was definitely the thing I used the least. Although it may seem like it might have been useful, I felt like it was easier just to measure the clothing on myself and my own body, um, especially with like this dress form being a little bit uh, low quality, uh, if, if we're being honest. It took a lot of duct tape and a lot of cross hatching, um, but it, you know, it, it didn't actually do its job. I think I preferred just doing it on my own. How did I choose my pattern? Oh, it was easy. I just picked the one I liked the most. Um, no, it was really difficult. You had to choose between so many options and it was definitely not easy. Okay, maybe that's true. So I had gone through a bunch of Instagram posts, a bunch of Pinterest posts, and I wanted to find uh, what inspired me. And I loved these sorts of kind of like baby blue dresses with some embroidery and um, a lot of tulle. I really liked the tulle. So yeah, I had a hard time deciding, but I did go with that kind of baby blue, fairy-like um, dresses with some embroidery. I chose a Vogue pattern for a couple reasons. One, I liked these uh, designs and I wanted, at first I wanted this uh, C sleeve, but I did end up going with this B sleeve. Um, and I chose it because I knew that Vogue is the kind of patterns that are a lot more advanced and I hadn't really worked with them before and I wanted to push my limits and see what I could, you know, try out for myself. It was also uh, something that I could try to adjust. I wanted it to try um, to add like multiple layers. This wasn't the kind of uh, pattern that came just with the layers already in it. And I wanted to lengthen it and change kind of some of the, uh, the, the skirt parts. So yeah, all of that went to planning. So through using my dress form a little bit, but mostly my pattern, I decided to use this red satin to make a mock-up because I did not want to mess up on the good fabric. All right, so here's my progress for the prototype. Um, it's a tiny little bit too small in the front. Like I feel like it doesn't close. Um, so when I add, like when I cut out of the real fabric, um, I'll just add like a centimeter more. Um, and then I really do not like the sleeves. Like on here it's fine. Maybe it's fine, I don't know. But like, I kind of, I don't like them very much. <laughs> After finalizing my mock-up and deciding what changes I wanted to make, like changing up the sleeves and adding a little bit extra in the front, I went out and searched for fabric. This was my favorite part. Okay, so here's my thought process. I've just been to the store and um, it was really good. I found some really cute things. That green one with like the floral stuff on it was really, really cute. My only qualm is that green one with the floral stuffs on it. The one that was like sister to the pink one. It's $60 a yard. <sighs> Excuse me? So obviously um, that's extremely expensive. So I'm not gonna pay for $60 a yard. Um, even though I probably only need like a little bit, but it, it's too scary. So I ended up buying this fabric online, this light blue tulle, and I learned that I'm much rather going in store. 
Um, I loved being able to touch the fabrics and know what I was kind of getting into before actually purchasing it. Uh, either way, this light blue tool ended up pretty well and I decided to layer it over this darker blue, or I guess it's still a light blue, um, pinstriped fabric. But plans changed and a big thing happened. Let's go see what the big thing was. I had found the most amazing fabric ever and it was only $6. So all plans changed when I found this fabric and I knew I needed to incorporate it into my dress. I had to take everything apart, I had to replan the entire design. You know, it really goes to show that as much hard work that you're going to put into the first first pass, you're going to have to do it all over again. And part of me was really excited to incorporate the new fabric, but the other one was kind of upset that I, all that hard work that I'd done, uh, essentially it went to waste. And then I tried to figure out how to use this fabric. Um, this is what I had wanted to do with like the, the, this kind of like floral fabric like all over and just have it be open at the front. But since it's not long enough, it would look something more like this. And I just feel like that looks kind of weird. Like it's too off, like far off the ground. Um, so this is what I'm gonna end up doing. Um, this like darker fabric is supposed to be this one because I have like this empty blue fabric is this guy right over here, um, over top of this guy. So it'll be like one, two, and then this one, like over half of it. So it would be kind of like open, open at the front. So what I'm thinking of doing um, is instead of like having to hem it all because I'm lazy, I can just utilize the hem that's already here. And that is when things started to pick up. A lot of the time went into planning. I feel that half of the project was just figuring out what fabric to use, figuring out what pattern I wanted to use, and convincing myself that I had the power to do this and I could actually cut this fabric and not ruin the entire thing. Once I started, you know, cutting out my new fabric, I'd already known that the dress kind of fit me because I'd already sewn it without the embroidered tool. Um, and then, yeah, the dress kind of became. All right, so here's what we've got so far. Um, I ended up deciding to line it because um, I felt like it was a little bit scratchy on the edges. And I saw this uh, YouTube video um, I was like, oh, if you line it and then like you sew it against the like top part, you can have like a really smooth line on the outside. And I used a gold thread to sew the top part. After that, I gathered the skirt, which is a technique I learned in like grade 10 uh, with Miss Cato. Shout out to you, Miss Cato. And then I screamed at my bobbin for a while because it's it was being annoying and yeah. So the dress is done. There isn't much else to do. Wrong. As much as I'd like to say that after sewing the sleeves, sewing the buttons, making the buttonholes, all these things that, you know, hemming the bottom, which took years, even after all that, it still can be like improved and a part of me is bothered by that like i it's like you can never really finish the dress but the dress is wearable you, i mean you gotta give it to that like cuffs are all done sleeves are all done nice bottom hem I'll have to put in some photos, but yeah. So what is my final consensus? I don't know. It was something that was really fun. I did enjoy it. There were so many things that went wrong and it was fun to like actually try to figure them out. Um, but I don't think that it was a very good representation of what I expected it to represent. <laughs> um, I think I expected a lot more out of this project, an actual answer maybe, but uh, just left with more 
confusion and more debating whether or not uh, going into fashion is right. Anyways, I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is.